worship. What a joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting arms. For 469. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on his heart. What a blessedness, oh, what a peace is mine, leaning on his heart, learning how to lead.
Good evening to everyone. This is the final call for all the children who participated in the Bible Heroes Bible Study. We're asking you to come to sit on the front rows, please. So this is your chance to move. Please come up front so that when we call you for your certificates, we won't have to wait very long. So while they're moving, um, the Bible study for children by children was one of the first initiatives here in our country, Dominica. And it was created with the objective to involve children in evangelism and provide them with the opportunity to be active participants in the process of winning souls. Every aspect of the program was done by children, except the writing of the lessons or the messages which were done by Miss Sister Roy and myself. The Zoom hosting was done by a young, a twin, not really a child, you know, in his early teens, Khalid Collier. Yeah? And every Friday night, a child presented a Bible hero, a lesson on a Bible hero. We had persons like Caleb Shepard, Giona Leta, Emily Adams, Dijon Charles, Kia Roye, Lance Durant, all participating in hosting the program. We had Kahoot quizzes which were created and presented by children themselves. We had Kelani, a teenager who helped us so well in the creation of Kahoot quizzes, and DeAndre Barry as well, who did the same. The presenters of the messages did exceptional jobs. We had persons in like Hananiah Bully, Niall Barry, Kedrick Roy, Stacey Nicholas, Malia Bertrand, Michelle Reed, and all of these children did so well in doing that, these lessons. They were actively involved in evangelism. And on given nights, some nights we had, the least amount of participants that we had were 80. Well, that's the least we had. And we had numbers all up to 117 on YouTube and 153 on Zoom. A lot of children participated. 60% of the participants were non-Adventists, which was a great thing for us because this really was our target market. And so we were so blessed to be a part of this. And so tonight, we present, we will have the opportunity to present to the children certificates. Not all of the children are here. However, they will receive honorable mention and receive their certificates after for those who were not here. We have with us tonight also one student a participant of the Bible study in the person of Lindy Later, who will share with us his experience with that program. And after, we will listen to special music by Kia Roye before we commence the distribution of the certificates. Lindy Later. Kira David, I'm sorry. We as children experience during the Bible Heroes. Yeah, Which have so much good lessons and the sorry. What we as children experience during the Bible Heroes online study is a large variation of songs which haven't been used in a while. Which has so much good lessons and the sermons which are done by fellow students from multiple schools, which take well-known Bible stories and bring out the message in them. Different stories which are known by everyone now have a new meaning to us and can be understood much better. Stories like Joseph, which, teacher, which teaches you that good God's way is always best, and Jesus growing up, which is a blueprint to doing what is right as a child of God. These things which have now been made much clearer to us and has helped us be better equipped to, go, to do God's work. And how could I forget the icing on the cake, the part anticipated by everyone, the kahoot, at the end of each sermon, which is there to ensure the message sticks with you for a long time. So please, let's give a round of applause for the Bible Heroes online study, which has made us better children of God. Good night, everyone.
Good evening, everyone. And so we are about to present our certificates to the children who participated in the Bible Heroes Children Bible Study. We thank you so much. And we're going to get straight to it. Hopefully, your names will be pronounced well. <laughs> we will try. So the first name we have is Dinari Fedrick. And we can give her a round of applause, a little encouraging round of applause. So if the Nari is here, we have Abia Frederick, Daniel Frederick, Anaya James, Lawson James, Malia Bertrand, Stacy Nicholas, Karani Schillingford, Lee. Liana Johnville, Michaela Dominique, okay. Right. okay, so if you, if you, if you heard your name, you come up to receive your certificates, okay? 
if you didn't know that. All right. We have Sedia or Sedia Laville. Angel Christian. Adli Alexandre. Ronaldo Tony. Amber Christian. So Ronaldo is coming. Okay. All right. I'll slow down. Odessa Loda. We have Kesslyn Joseph. And Akira Schillingford. Jediah Sylvain. Rachel Balmond, Shara K. John Baptist, Denicia Moranzi, Denicia, okay, so we have Shara K, okay, and then Denicia Moranzi. Barry, DeAndre Barry, Zephaniah Seja. Tennessee Reed, Nyla Barry, and Niall Barry, Mikael Reed, Zima Gibbons, uh, Ruel Fabian, Azariah Stewart, Adija Frederick, Giovanni Phillips, Nakeda Raphael. Raphael. Okay, I try. Thank you. 
Nathan Samuel, and George Andre, Gabriel Rivier, or Gabriel Rivier, Dominique Charles, Aria Charles, Talia Guy, Gervino Ch Challenger, Adhira Pierre, Kayla Antoine, KJ Leta, no. Jelinda Foy, 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 okay. Hananiah Bully, is that, that Jelinda? Giona Leta, Kedrick Royer, Ke Ebony Sandville, Shepherd We have Rowan Lazarus Jr. Shepherd. 
Hogan. Khalid Collier. Adela Xavier. And Aldion Xavier. And Malcolm Bertrand. Thank you very much. Can we give them a huge round of applause, please? All right, thank you for participating in this Bible series, and we hope that it was truly beneficial to each and every one of you. Thank you so much. All right, blessings.
evening, everyone. I'm asking the ushers to please take their position as we pick up the evening's offering. We are asking everyone to dip their po- dip in their pocket very deep. <laughs> Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you for a beautiful day. And Lord, as we are about to give, we pray, dear Lord, that as we give our offering, that we will give ourselves to thee. And even as we give, we pray, dear Lord, that this offering will go to the furtherance of your night everybody you're looking good tonight I'm looking around and I'm seeing a lot of members of the steel family you didn't get that is that a surname in Dominica S-T-E-E-L-E no in Barbados they are actually people by that name S-T-E-E-L-E the steel family And I look around tonight and I see a lot of steel. (laughs) And I'm saying to myself, what's happening in Dominica? Well, Easter Sunday, Easter anything, as long as I'm here, we're getting the word of God. Is that all right? I would like to say good night to all of those who are online. We appreciate you tuning in with us. Um, When I came up tonight, about 330 persons or so are watching us online. We want to remind people that we begin at 6.30 on Sunday evenings. And the reason why we choose to begin at 6.30 is so we can end early and you'll be able to go home to face the new work week. So I hope that 6.30 is not too early for you because what we are trying to do is accommodate the fact that we are aware Monday is a work day for very many people. School day as well. So we want to begin early on Sundays, end early, and let you go home to get a rest and to prepare for the new day ahead. I would just like to encourage and invite those in the second tent. There's plenty of room in the front tent tonight. 
And if you're so inclined, come right forward. Step right forward. Somebody messaged me yesterday. Well, not messaged me, walked up to me and said to me, Pastor, um, we are not seeing the screens. We are not seeing the slides in the back tent. Well, here's your big opportunity. Come forward. Come forward. There's plenty of space so that you can see the screens and the projection here tonight. I want to remind you of a few quick things. Number one, on Thursday the 18th of April, there will be a gospel concert under this tent. It will be produced by the staff, the parents, and the students of the Ebenezer SDA Primary School. It's a fundraiser. You do not have to pay anything to attend the concert, but they're asking you to bring an offering and also to come planning to purchase some of the food items that will be on sale. All of the cash raised from that concert will go to the Ebenezer Seventh-day Adventist Primary School to assist them with construction of a new building. Is that all right, everybody? So that's the 18th. Remember that this coming Sabbath day, you are invited to worship with us again for a special Sabbath treat. We begin at 9 a.m. We will be providing lunch for all our visitors and guests. So please register. Let us know you're coming so that we can reserve a seat for you and plan to have lunch prepared for you as well. This Sabbath when you come, plan to stay with us for the entire day. So we'll have the morning service. We'll have lunch. We'll have baptism for all those who would like to be baptized. And in the afternoon, we're going to have a grand program for all who would like to participate. Now, a part of that program is going to be a talent show. So we are asking the children, the young people, the elderly, whoever wants to participate, to please give your names to Pastor Tito. Pastor Tito, just so that everybody can see you, rush, run up here like you're running to Jesus, please. Here he comes. This is how he runs to Jesus. I'm not Jesus, but this is just how he runs to Jesus. Now, this is Pastor Kadik Tito. If you are interested in saying a poem, in singing a song, whether a solo or duet or group, give that item to Pastor Tito. It must be a religious item. All right? It must be a religious item. And whatever you do, it must be in harmony with the seventh day Sabbath worship and the praise of Almighty God. Is that all right? Give him your names. There's limited space. So get your names in early. Who knows, Pastor? You and I may be able to get together and sing a solo. Amen. You sing half and I sing half. And that'll be one solo. That's right. Praise God. Thank you very much for coming up tonight. So those are the things that I needed to remind you of. We will not meet tomorrow night, Monday. Um, you spend the time with your families. But we will meet on Tuesday night. What night did I say we are back here then? On Tuesday night at 7 p.m. sharp. We are here again on Wednesday night. And this week, you get a second night off. Well, every week we get Thursdays. But this week, you get Monday night because that's the holiday. And Thursday, we will keep that as an off night as well. And we'll be back on Friday. So let me repeat. We are here Tuesday night. We are here Wednesday night. We are resting Thursday night. And then we are back on Saturday, on Sabbath night, Friday night. And all day Sabbath, we are going to be here. If you have made up your mind to be baptized or you're thinking about it, sign up online tonight. There will be a form being made available to you. At the end of this service, we'll also make that available to those under the tent. And if you are thinking seriously about being baptized this Sabbath, then please indicate so that we can prepare you for that baptism. Remember those who um, participated in bringing their guests and you were given coupons. The person that got the most coupons, you should be able to receive that prize on Tuesday night. And then on Wednesday night for one night only, the visitor 
who brings the most visitors on Wednesday night is going to get Pastor Maranci's cake. Now, he said he didn't bake it himself, right? He got it from the professionals. So, it's going to be a nice cake. And be prepared to receive it. Bring all of your friends. The visitor who brings the most visitors gets the cake on Wednesday night. So, see you then. And may God bless you. Let's stand together, please, and sing our theme song tonight as we get ready for the sermon. Lord, I come to you. Those in the back tent can still come forward, please. Let's sing the song. Lord, I come to you. Renewed, flowing from the grace that I found. And Lord, I've come to know the weaknesses I see. By the power of your love. Come on, everybody. Lift your hands and sing this song tonight. Hold me close. Bring me near. Draw me to your side. the eagles and I will soar with you your spirit leads me on stands in number two come on let's go Lord unveil my eyes the knowledge of your love Lord, renew my mind. In living every day. By the power of your love. Let's see your hands as you sing, hold me close. Everybody, hold me close. Heavenly Father, tonight, we have come to cherish your word. 
and we believe that what you have written for us is true help us to value scripture tonight and to be willing to dig deep into that sacred page of history to know your will to understand salvation and to strengthen ourselves for life in these troubled times. Lord, open our understanding tonight and bless our hearts, save our souls, we pray. In Jesus' name. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you very much, praise team. Thank you very, very much. I see Bajan Sean Mears has found a new role tonight. Yeah. I, I know I don't look it and he doesn't look it, but I pastored him when he was a teenager. Yeah, I was his pastor. Yeah. Married him. Well, I performed the wedding ceremony. That's what I mean. Yeah, let me make that clear. Performed the wedding ceremony. 20, how many years ago? 27? You almost catch me up, man. I was a very young pastor. I'm, I'm just 30, 30 years in marriage. So that would tell you how young I was. Um, I don't think I'm an old man, but I'm no longer young. Brother Gordon where has the time gone? Went by quickly, preacher. Very quickly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's see if we have the screens tonight. What's tonight's topic, everybody? QFT. Quoted, what does QFT mean? Quoted for truth. Quoted for truth. I'm waiting to see if we have the PowerPoint coming up. Shall I go again? I don't have it yet. But Agore needs to be able to read, so we've got to be able to get it up. Let's see what happens now. Something strange is happening. Slide left. All right. Maybe I zigged when I should have zagged. Is it there? Good. So tonight's topic is what, everybody? QFT. And what does that mean? Quoted for truth. Now, tonight's sermon... You've got to listen very carefully. This is the type of message that engages the mind. Perhaps more than it engages the emotions. And so I need everybody to be thinking and to be listening and to be reasoning over what I'm going to tell you tonight. It's going to get a little bumpy in here. And a little hot. And I am hoping that nobody gets offended. I'm putting you on notice. I promise to tell the truth. The whole truth. And nothing but truth. Are you listening to me tonight? Good. Quoted for truth. This expression, QFT, is part of the popular modern slang used on the World Wide Web and in social media. In online forums, people use QFT to accompany text from another commenter to emphasize their agreement with what has been said. So if a person says something and you like it, you copy and paste it and add the letters QFT. I have quoted it for truth. 
This simply means I agree with this statement. Is anybody listening to me tonight? Oh, yes. Now, QFT also is used when another user makes a post which describes your own point of view or belief or something so perfectly that you believe you could not have said or done it better. And therefore, because you cannot improve on it, you quote it and you repost it and you add the letters QFT quoted for truth, which now means I could not have said it better. Are you still with me tonight, church? And then QFT also means uh, you use it to prevent people who have posted something from coming back later and changing their minds. So you copy it, you paste it, you add the letters QFT quoted for truth to say I am holding the author responsible for this statement. Are you still listening to me? Oh yes. Please. I want to say to you tonight that QFT therefore means three things. Recap with me, Brother Gorin. Number one. I agree with, with this statement as being true. Everybody with the reader. Number two. I could not have said it better. And number last. I am holding the author to this statement. Are you with me tonight, church? Oh yes. Quoted for truth. Now I want to ask you the question tonight. How do you know when a statement is being worthy of being quoted as truth? It's not any and everything that you can associate with. Something is either true or it's false. It's either right or it's wrong. I believe it's either black or it's white. You're either going to heaven or you're going to hell. It's either up or down. Are you listening to me tonight, oh, church yes, of preacher. God? So how do we know when we can quote something huh, as being true? Follow me tonight. There are three types of writing that I want to describe at this point. Fact, fiction, and fairy tale. Can everybody repeat those three after me? Fact. Fact. Fiction. Fiction. Fairy tale. Fairy tale. Let's explain them, Brother Gorin. What is a fact? Something that actually exists. Reality, Reality or truth. Or truth. Everybody read out loud. What is a fact? Something, Something that actually exists. It is reality or truth. So let's test the facts tonight. Dalmatian dogs are born without spots. Is that true or is that false? false? The answer is that is true. Come on preacher, tell us now. Dalmatian dogs are born lily white. Amen. And as they grow to maturity, oh, yeah. they get spots. And you've got to know what is true and what is false. Yes, preacher. Now, wait a while, wait a while. Let's get another one here. Apple seeds. Contain the China. ones we get from United States, England, and Canada. Mercy. They contain cyanide. Yes, sir. Which is what, Brother Gorin? A deadly poison. But not enough. In a single apple to kill a human being. Now, is this true? Or is this false? This also is true. It's true. It is true. And there are lots of things that people believe out there tonight that are not true. Now I'm going to pull the wool from off your eyes tonight. Get with me now. The second one. What is fiction? Everybody read out loud for me, please. Any form of story which deals in part or in whole with events that are not factual, that are not true, but, but rather, rather imaginary. What is fiction is imaginary or invented by its author. Partly or totally made up, it's fiction. Yes, sir. Now let me express to you tonight 
some items that are fiction. You might be shocked to find out, some of you. Spider-Man. <laughs> Tell us, preacher. Is fiction. Oh, yes. Superman. Mm -hmm. Is fiction. For sure. Star Wars. Yeah. Is fiction. Godzilla and King Kong. Tell us, preacher. Are fiction. For sure. The three musketeers. That's fiction. And bless your heart, I hope that you know. What did I just read there? Wrong thing. Uh, three musketeers. Robin Hood is also fiction. Fiction, preacher. And bless your heart, I hope that you know tonight. Santa Claus. Oh, yes is fiction. Fiction preacher. When I was growing up and I saw the gifts underneath the tree and filling the stockings in the house and they told me Santa passed but I listened to the song. Santa came down the chimney. Chimney. Half past three. Mercy. Ate the milk and so I drank the milk and ate the cookies. Hmm. Goring, the only problem is that our house didn't have no chimney. No chimney in Barbados preacher. I get you. <laughs> Anybody listening to me? Oh, yeah. And I knew it was dad who stuffed the stockings and put the gifts under the tree. Santa Claus, I'm sorry to burst your bubble tonight, is fiction. True. Powerful. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So we know what is fact, we know what is fiction. Let's answer the question tonight what is fairy tale? A story intended for children, often involving some fanciful creatures, such as fairies or animals that talk, Burr Rabbit, Burr Fox, hmm. a Nancy, a Nancy. and the Agouti. Yes, sir. Anybody knows what I'm talking about? Yeah. Three little pigs. Hmm. Let me show you some other areas that are fairy tale. Huh? Three little pigs. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. Mercy. Snow White and the dwarfs. Yes, sir. That's a fairy tale. Cinderella. Fairy tale. And there's still some people looking for a glass slipper and a prince to come and save them. Mm. Beauty and the beast. Yes, now, I've seen some bad behaved folk that remind me of Beauty and the Beast. Come on now. I, 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 and it may make me wonder if it's not true, but I, I have to confess tonight Beauty and the Beast is fairy tale. Are you listening to me? What else is fairy tale? Rapunzel, let down your hair. Oh, yes. That's a fairy tale. Fairy tale. Are you still with me? Yes, preacher. Goldilocks. Huh? Red Riding Hood. Fairy tale. Fairy tale. Yes, sir. Now, one of my favorite characters is the comic strip called Peanuts. <laughs> Snoopy the dog fancies that he is an author. He is always on top of his dog house with his typewriter writing a story. Hmm. So, along comes Lucy. And Lucy says, look at him. There he is writing again, thinking that he is an author. And they ask Snoopy what he is doing. Snoopy says, I'm writing a story. Snoopy, how does your story begin? Snoopy starts to read. It was a dark and stormy night. Lucy says, Snoopy, don't you know that all good stories begin once upon a time? Snoopy pulls out the paper, crumples it up, throws it in the waste basket, puts in a fresh sheet and begins to write his story over. Once upon a time, it was a dark and stormy night. Mercy. Is anybody listening to me? Yes, sir. But then the God of heaven was ready to write a story. He did not engage with fiction. Oh, no. He did not engage with fairy tale. Come on now. He simply begins by saying, in the beginning, yes, sir. God created the heavens and the earth. Is anybody hearing me tonight? Yes, sir. That's how a real story begins. 
That's how every story begins. We are here because of God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Darwin will tell us that we evolved, that there is survival of the fittest. Scientists may want to suggest that somehow lower forms of life came out of water. There were single cells uh, and they came up all slimy. Grow legs, grow fur, grow wings, grow tails, drop tails, drop wings and became human beings. That is fairy tale. That's it preacher. That is fiction. The reality is that we are created yes, in the image of God. Somebody ought to give God praise up in here tonight. Amen. And I want to quote this for truth. Yes, preacher. When I quote the Bible for truth, I am saying tonight I agree with this statement. I could not have said it better. better. Yes, sir. And I hold the author liable yes. for this statement. Yes. Definitely. Is anybody hearing me tonight? We're with you, preacher. So I want to quote this book tonight for truth. There are some people who do not believe in God. And they do not believe in a created system by a God. I want to suggest to you that there's no way Somebody as handsome and intelligent as I am, so well constructed and built, Tell us, could have evolved from orangutan. Agree. Orangutan is ugly. Come on now. But I am handsome, fearfully and wonderfully made. And if you do not think so, I don't care. My wife thinks so. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me tonight? Loud and clear, preacher. I am saying to you, human beings are not constructs of somebody's imagination as we evolved or devolved or came out from some lower species. My Bible says that God stepped out on space and anchored one foot on nothing and the other one on air and then said, let there be light. And there was light. For he spoke and it stood fast. Oh, he commanded and it came into existence. And then like a mommy bending over her baby, God knelt down in the dust. And from the dust of the earth, he created man and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. I am quoting this for truth. Amen, preacher. I believe the Bible. I believe everything the Bible says. Amen. I believe it's the holy word of a holy God. Yes, sir. Who has revealed himself to us human beings through the written and spoken word. Story says that Sir Isaac Newton, the scientist, had a friend who was, was um, let me see if I have it right here for you. Make sure I have this, the facts right. I don't want to tell you anything. Yes, Newton had the friend. And this friend was an atheist. An atheist is a person titled, as you well know, that does not believe in the existence of God. But there were scientists together. This man would say to Newton, you believe in God? And Newton would say, yes. Then he would ask his friend what he believed. He said, I believe. That circumstances were right. And there was some type of explosion or implosion that created the universe. And Newton would say never. Because there's too much order and structure and design in the universe. Amen. An accident does not happen. An explosion does not occur and bring about order. True preacher. When an explosion occurs... It brings about disorder. Definitely. It brings about destruction. Uh -huh. There is no way that there was a big bang, a big explosion, and people looking like you and me are the result of that. Impossible, preacher. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Loud and clear. So Newton made a model of the universe. The sun at the center, 
in the context of our earth and what we see, the planets and the stars revolving and spinning around it. And he gave it um, motion and movement and the thing began to work and move and everything dodged one another and spun in orbit and, 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 and it was a wonderful masterpiece of machinery. His friend came to his workshop one day and saw this thing on the desk and said, Newton, this is a tremendous model of how our world operates with planets and stars and sun and moon. Who made this? Newton said, nobody. I just came in one day and saw it here on my desk. I had scrap metal all around my workshop. And somehow at night, scrap metal got together with scrap metal. And as though they had a mind of their own, this is the result of an explosion in my workshop. Mercy. And the friend said, Newton, you can't fool me. Somebody made this. Oh, yes. It is too orderly, too practical, too well designed to be an accident. To which Newton responded, now you can't believe this, but you can believe that there's no God and that an accident created the heavens and the earth. My Bible says, in the beginning, God created. Yes, sir. Light and there was light. Animals out of the earth. Birds of the air. Fish of the sea. Adam with his Eve. And may I take the time to mention that God did not make Adam and Steve. Come on preacher. Come on now. Made Adam and Eve. Eve preacher. The original model is what we still hold to today. Yes, sir. God brought the man to the woman and said, Leave, cleave, conceive. Yeah. Amen. For this cause shall a man leave his mother and father. And that's our truth. Amen. Are you hearing me tonight? I'm going somewhere with this. <laughs> Let's read the Bible. The Bible says what in the, Psalm, Psalm chapter 19, verse 1, 2, and 3. Read with the reader, please, out loud. The heavens declare the glory of God. Now, wait a minute. The heavens do what? Declare. The heavens speak about the glory of God. The heavens tell a story about the glory of God. Go ahead now. The skies proclaim the work of his hand. The skies proclaim the work of God's in other words, when we look at nature, when we look at creation, when we look into the stars, we see the work of God. And it is so marvelous that we have to cry out, how great thou art. Yes, sir. How great thou art. Now, Job chapter 22 verse 21 says something else. This God that made the sun, moon, and stars, Job advises us to do something. A what does he say? Now acquaint yourself with him. With God. And be at and peace. And be at peace. Now watch, watch, watch. I am saying to you tonight. And I know that all right thinking people will understand and agree. Intelligent design reveals an intelligent designer. designer. Yes, sir. Now, Barry, when I was growing up, there was this song called King Liar. Anybody remember King Liar? Huh? Man, nobody don't know King Liar. Y'all don't listen to good music or what? So the story is that these men were bragging about their tailors and who can make the best suits and the best clothes. And the first man said that his tailor is class. Rolf Fields is his name. Cutting cloth, making suit is his game. You can just show him a man going around a corner and he can make him a suit and don't even measure. Huh? Come anybody, on now. anybody knows his song? And then it comes in in the refrain, lie. You hear lie? That is lie. Lie. It was a lying competition. Mm. So that was the first lie that was told. But then that man was challenging King Liar. And King Liar came out with a better lie. Mm -mm. He says, listen man, you might tell it is such class. You don't have to show him the man going around the corner. Just show him the corner where he fell apart. <laughs> And he will make him a suit. Hmm. 
That is a lie. That is lie. Oh, yeah. And anybody hear, hear me tonight? Yes. yes, preacher. Now, I want you to listen to what I'm saying. Any reasonable person would agree that there's so much order in nature that there must be a designer who designed nature. Absolutely, preacher. And whoever that person is, they are class. Definitely. God is not first class. God is just simply class. Class. Are you hearing me tonight? Oh, yes. Now, let's get somewhere with this. I love this statement by Job. This is one of my favorite statements in the Bible. Wisdom literature. Listen to what Job says. Read it for me, please. Everybody out loud. 12, verse 7 to 9. But, but now, now, ask the beast. Ask who, everybody? The beast. Come on, talk to me, everybody. Ask who? The beast. And they will do what? Teach you. And ask who else? The, the birds. Of so the air. And they will? Tell you. What will they tell you? Or speak to the earth. And it will teach you. And the fish of, of the sea and will explain to you. And they will explain to you. Who among all of these does not know? That the hand of the Lord. That the hand of the Lord has done this. Now what does Job say? Job says animals know but human beings don't know. Mercy. Job says ask the beast. Ask the birds. Ask the fish. And they will tell you. It is the hand of the Lord that has done this. Amen. Are you ready, brother Gorin? Oh, yes. I don't have time to ask all the beasts tonight, but I'm going to ask one of them. Are you ready with me, church? We're ready, preacher. Now, I want to show you my mind, how I think, how I reason from Scripture. And I hope and believe that when you see this, you will know that you can quote Scripture for truth. So let's do what Job says. Job says, ask the beast, and they will tell you that the hand of the Lord has done this. What do you see on your screen? Huh? A giraffe. A giraffe. Oh, yes. Now, a giraffe is a tall creature. Definitely. With a long neck. Uh-huh. And long legs. I stood next to a giraffe in South Africa. Huh? I'm a midget standing next to anybody. A midget preacher. But more so next to a giraffe. Come on now. 12, 14, 15 feet high. Yes, sir. I can't even reach upon his leg. Do wow. you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Now, the giraffe is an amazing creature. He, by the way, is a vegetarian. Come on now. He eats leaves from high up. Oh, yes. And he drinks water from down low. Oh, no down. Yes, sir. Then he has to drink at the stream. He sprawls his legs. Has anybody ever seen this on National Geographic? Now watch me, watch me. Let's, let's ask the beast to find out who made them. Now watch this, watch this. Watch this, church. Now I am told that the giraffe's heart is approximately 22 pounds in weight and 2 feet in diameter. Hmm. The giraffe has the highest blood pressure of all the animals on the face of the earth. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, preacher. Why is his heart so big? Why does it weigh so much? Why is his blood pressure 280 over 180? Tell us, preacher. Because when he is standing up, yes, sir, blood has to get up to his brain for sure and it needs a large heart yes with a lot of force blood pressure to go up against gravity against gravity and reach his brain Strong. if the blood does not reach his brain he dies he dies of course are you listening to me yes preacher national geographic said to me hall the blood pressure goes up with so much force so much force that if the giraffe were to put his head down, the pressure should blow his brains into pieces. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. But it doesn't do that. Why? Look at the giraffe's neck, the one that's bending over. It has a series of seven valves. Click, 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 click. And 
as soon as he lowers his head, the valves lock off and restrict the blood pressure. Come on now. So that the blood flow slows down and does not burst his brain. Hallelujah. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Tell me that this is an accident. No accident, preacher. Ask the beast. Yeah. And they will tell you the hand of the Lord has done this. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. Mighty, 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 mighty. Mighty preacher. Are you listening to what oh, I'm saying? Oh, yes. <coughs> There's nothing that God cannot do. Amen. He is a miracle working God. And the design that he placed into animals tells us that he is a great designer. I believe Genesis 1, therefore, when it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, some of you know, Pastor Tittle, they full well know that Adventists don't eat pork, don't drink coke, don't smoke dope. Come on now, preacher. Are you listening to me? Oh, yes. I want to give you another example of God's designing nature to prove that there is a God. Now, seven day Venice do not eat fish that do not have fins and scales. True, preacher. At least seven day Venice should not be eating fish. True, true. That does not have fins and scales. We do not eat shark. True. The Bible said, whatsoever is in the water, it must have fins and scales to eat it. No crabs. No lobsters, no shark, true preacher, no urchins, no sea eggs, come on, no eels, come on. no slugs, no snails because they do not have fins. All right, so let's talk with science now. If you don't believe the Bible, why would God say, Do not eat fish or things in the water without fins or scales? Let me tell you what I've discovered. Fish that do not have fins and scales. Well, but first, let me explain. Why do fish, especially in salty conditions, have fins and scales? It's not there for you to take a knife and scrape them off and eat them. They are part of the fish's body for a reason. If you have ever heard about diffusion and osmosis, you know that substances of high concentration yes. move across a membrane through water or air to an area of low concentration. That's true. Fish that live in salty water have scales to keep out the salt. Yes, sir. If they don't have that, the salt comes into the tissue and kills the fish. True, true. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And the fins and scales regulate how the fish allows the water to touch its flesh. When it needs salt, it opens up and it lets in the water to bring in the salt. When it does not need, it closes to make sure that it does not admit salt. Now, what does fish and creatures in the water that do not have fins and scales do? What do they do? Science has proven. Come on, preacher. Things like sharks. Yes, sir. They retain urea in the tissues of their body. And urea is the main constituent in urine. Dominicans, it is pee. Come on, preacher. Make it clear. And I think all of us would have heard by now that urine is salty. Yes. And it is poisonous. Yes. Because all the bad stuff goes into the urine and is to be evacuated from the body. Fish that do not have fins and scales keep urine in their tissues. And I believe that's why God says, don't eat them. They are unclean unto you. Yes, preacher. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you tonight? It's crystal clear. Didn't Job say, ask the beast? Oh, yes. Didn't he say, ask the fish? Now, I read my Bible differently from many people. When, when the Bible tells me, ask, beast, I ask them. Come on now. I said, what, what is about you that Job is telling me to ask you so that I will know who has done this? And you can do it for yourself. Do a little research and you will see that this is by design. Yes, sir. This is evidence 
that there is a God. Hallelujah. I don't know what else you need. David says, when I consider the sun, moon, and stars, the planets, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Do you understand? You don't have to think to breathe. Think for your heart to beat. Think for your kidneys to function. All of this is done by the power of God. Yes, we sir. are fearfully and wonderfully made. And that's why Seventh-day Adventists honor God by the way in which we take care of our bodies. Amen. Because our bodies are the temple of the living God. I don't eat junk. No rum for me. No cigarette smoke for me. No drugs for me. No nasty meat for me. Because I want the spirit of God to live in me. Amen. Are you hearing me tonight? I told you this is going to be a bumpy ride. All right, now watch me. Watch me, church. I'm going somewhere with this. Watch me. So we ask the beast, right? And so I'm quoting the Bible for truth. Yes. I want you to know tonight that don't care what they say about the Bible, the Bible is still the best-selling book in the world. Amen. It sells more copies than anything else. Even people running for high office in government are selling Bibles. If you don't know, then you don't deserve to know. Okay, then. <laughs> go, on, go, on, go on read the news. Yeah. Now, now watch this. There have been many attempts by the Goring to destroy the Bible. Yes, sir. Tell me about Diocletian. Who was Diocletian, he? a Roman emperor. Ruling when? Most of the world in AD 301 to 304. He made a concentrated effort to do what? Destroy all the Bibles. He made a medal and set up a monument with the inscription in Latin. Extinto nomine Christianorum. When that is translated into English, what does it mean, Brother Goring? The name of Christianity has been extinguished. The Diocletian said, basically, that he's going to destroy all the Bibles. Hmm. But tonight, Diocletian is dead. Dead preacher. And the Bible is still here. Hallelujah. First Peter 1, 24, 25 says, All flesh is grass. And all the glory of man is as the flower of the grass. Yes. What happens to it, Brother Gorena? The grass withers. Come on, everybody. And its flower falls away. But the word, word of the Lord endures forever. Somebody ought to say amen tonight. Amen, preacher. Diocletian is gone. Oh, yes. But the Bible is still here. Hallelujah. The scripture says heaven and earth may pass away. But my words, my words will by no means, will by no means pass away. Isn't God a wonderful God? Yes, he is. And then there was 1788 Voltaire, yes. a French nobleman and author. What did Voltaire say in 1788? In, in 100 years, there wouldn't be a Bible. So he's predicting for 1888. That's what he said. Now, I want you to know Voltaire is dead. Oh, yes. But the Geneva Bible Society has been located for a period in Voltaire's former house. Amen. And in 1888, yes. Voltaire's most famous book sold for 11 cents. 11 cents. The Codex Sinaiticus, the oldest copy of the Bible in Greek in that same year, sold for half million dollars. Hallelujah. Voltaire is dead. Oh, yes. But the word of God is still here. For sure. What does Psalm 118 verse 89 say? Forever, Forever O oh Lord. Your word is settled. Your word is settled where? In heaven. In heaven. Let's go a little further. How did we get the Bible? According to 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 21, Peter says, For the prophecy came when not... When he says prophecy, he means the word of God. Yes, sir. For the word of God came not in old times by... The will of man. How did it come? But holy men of God. What kind of men were the glory? Holy men The of people God. we call apostles. The people we call disciples. The people we call prophets. Are you listening to me, children of God? Yes. Holy men of God. Sp they did what? Spit. And they wrote. As they were moved. By the Holy Spirit. So how did we get the word? The Holy Spirit motivated men to write down the thoughts and the words that God gave them. Let the church say amen. Amen, preacher. Now watch this. 
This is a bombshell text. Yes. Now, there are pastors around the world today telling people that the Old Testament is outdated and abolished. They say we are under new dispensation and only the New Testament is valid. They like to say that Seventh-day Adventists emphasize the Old Testament too much. But I want to read from the New Testament for you tonight. What does the New Testament say in 2 Timothy 3, 16? All scripture. Now read it slowly for me, please. What? All how, how much scripture? Only the New Testament. All scripture. What does Paul say about the scriptures? All scripture. Huh? Is what? Given by inspiration of God. Now when Paul says scripture, what does he mean? Now... What we now call the New Testament was written by the disciples and the apostles. Yes, sir. Paul himself is now writing letters to Timothy. And at the time when Paul says all scripture, there was no New Testament. True. The New Testament was now being written, now being formed. So what is Paul talking about when he says all scripture? All scripture, according to Paul, is Old Testament scriptures. And don't tell me Jesus abolished it because Jesus was already dead and Paul was working for him. And Paul was saying, uh, New Testament, sorry, Old Testament is inspired by God. But I go in, read on. It's given by inspiration of God. And, and it's profitable. What that word profitable means. It brings value. Oh, yeah. It brings gain. So, Old Testament is valuable. Oh, yes. What else is valuable for what? For doctrine. For doctrine. Everybody say doctrine. Doctrine. There's some doctrine in the Old Testament that we got to dig out. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And it's profitable for reproof. reproof. What does reproof mean? It means rebuke. Oh, yes. And it's profitable for correction. Correction, yes. correction also means rebuke. Yes. And it's profitable for instruction in righteousness. Yes, preacher. What scripture is that? All scripture. Oh, yes. And when Paul said that, the only scripture he had was the Old Testament. Am I right or am I correct? Right and correct. Go home and ask your pastor if that's not true. Ask your priest if that's not true. I am quoting this for truth. This is not fairy tale. Are you listening to what I'm saying? True. This is not fairy tale. This is not fiction. This is a fact. Definitely. In the New Testament, the apostles are quoting from the Old Testament. Now watch me tonight. Watch, 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 watch. Let's read that again. All scripture is given by what? Inspiration of God. And it's profitable for what? Doctrine. We have to get some doctrine from the Old Testament. Yes. Some reproof from yes. the Old Testament. Some correction from the Old Testament. Yes. And some instruction in righteousness from the Old Testament. But somebody still doesn't believe me. Let's stay in the New Testament for now, brother. I'm going to Luke. Luke is the gospel according to who they call Saint Luke. Yes. Right? And this is written by a doctor who attended Paul. And he is writing about Jesus. In Luke 24, he is talking about what happened with Jesus and the disciples after Jesus was crucified and rose again and was walking with them to a place called Emmaus. Do you remember that story? Oh, yes. Let's read what it says now. Jesus joined the disciples and began to talk to them. They did not recognize him at first, but he spoke to them. What does Luke say Jesus did? And Continue now. These are the words which... Now, wait a while. And he, Jesus... Yes. You notice the capital H? He, Jesus... If you look in your Bible, the words that follow are in red. Because oh, yes. these are the words of Jesus. He said unto them... Go ahead now. 
These are the words which I speak unto you. While I was yet with you. Go ahead now. That all things must be fulfilled. Things must be fulfilled where? Which are written in the law of Moses. Now where is the law of Moses? Is that New Testament or Old Testament? Old Testament. Genesis. Exodus. Yes. Leviticus. Numbers. And Jew Toronomy. Which is the second numbering of the people. Those are the books of Moses. For sure. And Jesus says, these are the things which I was telling you about, which were written in the law of Moses. Moses. Yes, sir. And where else? And in the prophets. Where do we find the prophets in the Bible? Huh? Isaiah, Jeremiah, yes. Lamentations, oh, yeah. Ezekiel, Daniel, Amos, Haggai, Malachi. Zephaniah, oh, yes. Habakkuk, Jonah. So Jesus says, I was teaching you from the law, the books of Moses, and from the prophets. And where else, Brother Gorin? In the Psalms. Do we know what the Psalms are? Yes, sir. Huh? Huh? Do we know what the Psalms are? He shall be like a tree. Come on now. Rooted and grounded. Are you listening to me, church? So Jesus said that he taught his disciples from the law of Moses, from the prophets, from the Psalms, and what were those things that he taught them about? He ends by saying that those things were concerning me. So there's something in the law of Moses that concerns Jesus. Oh, yes. Something in the prophets that concerns Jesus. Yes. Something in the Psalms that, that concerns concern Jesus. Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd. Yes. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He restoreth my soul. Why would anybody want to abolish that? Come on now. Lots of preachers saying the Old Testament is not valid. But all of them reading the 23rd Psalm. Yes, sir. They are hypocrites. Oh, for sure. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Jesus said there's something in, this, in the law, in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. I want to tell you tonight the whole Bible is about Jesus. Oh, yes. Are you listening to what I'm saying? The Old Testament says a Savior is coming. The New Testament says a Savior has come. Are you listening to me like Church of God? The Old Testament tells us where we are coming from. And the New Testament tells us where we are going. The Old Testament promises that Messiah will come. The New Testament says what Messiah did when he came. You cannot have a complete picture of God with just a New Testament. True preacher. You must have old and you must have new. Definitely. What does Paul say? All scripture. Yes, sir. But I suspect some people want to abolish the Old Testament because they don't like certain things in it. Come on now. Because it is the Old Testament that begins to tell us how we should eat. Yes, sir. Huh? It is the Old Testament that says every herb yielding seed in which there is the seed upon the face of the earth that shall you have for meat. It is the Old Testament that tells us hog meat should not be eaten by human beings. It is the Old Testament that tells us that God made us. Yes, sir. And if we abolish that, we don't know where we come from. True preacher. Are you listening to me? The psalmist says the law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. Why would anybody want to abolish something that is perfect? I want to tell you Dominicans, I have the best wife in the world. Tell us preacher. I'm telling you. Brother Goring, she's better than yours. Okay then. Because she's my wife. That's correct. That's anybody, the context. Anybody understands what I'm saying to you tonight? Yes, sir. Now, now hear what I'm saying. I have the best wife in the world. 
Why would I want to change that? True. Why would anybody want to abolish, get rid of, put away something that is perfect? The law of the Lord is perfect. But preachers want to abolish it. Mercy. And they want to blame Jesus for having done so. Hmm. Huh? Not Jesus. Think not that I have come to destroy the law and the prophets. Yes, sir. I have not come to destroy. No. But to establish. Establish. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, preacher. And Jesus quoted so many times from the Old Testament. Why would he want to abolish it? Jesus went to church on the seventh day of Sabbath. Stood up in the synagogue to read the gospel. Yes. And read from Isaiah. The spirit of the God is upon me. Yes. For he has anointed me to preach. Are you listening to me, children oh, of yes, God? yes, preacher. Some of the sweetest gospel comes from the Old Testament. He was despised. Yes. Rejected of men. Oh, yes. Surely he has borne our grief. Are you listening to me? Yes, preacher. They that wait upon the Lord. Yes. Shall renew their strength. Their strength, preacher. They shall mount up with things like. Are you listening to me? Eagle. I will look up to the hills. Yes. From whence cometh my, my help. help. My help comes from. Why do people want to abolish that? Hmm. There's so much counsel. So much encouragement. So much blessing. So much joy in the Old Testament. Why are there preachers saying that it's abolished? Hmm. This is a lie. Oh yes. I cannot quote that for truth. No preacher. There are many important things in that Old Testament that we have to get. Yes, sir. And from this night going forward, I'm going to begin to show you them. Amen. Amen. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Now let's hurry on. The Bible says about that same passage, we're now at verse 27, I think, but going. What does it say? And beginning at Moses. Wait a minute. Jesus is still talking. The Bible says Jesus began where? At Moses. Meaning the law. Yes. And all the prophets, he did what? Expounded. He preached. Oh, no, yes. no, no, Barry, English is a funny thing. You teach, but the past tense of teachers taught. Mm -hmm. And you preach, and the past tense of preachers brought. Interesting preacher. Preached. <laughs> right? And, and I wonder why we say mouse and mice. Mm. Huh? But house and houses. Why don't we say house and house? <laughs> or mouse and mouses. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Right. So Jesus expounded. He preached. He brought it. He preached unto them in all the scriptures. Yes. Isn't that what the Bible says? It's Jesus clear. preached from what, what did Jesus preach from? All the scriptures. What scripture did Jesus have? The Jesus old... didn't have any New Testament? No, sir. After Jesus was dead is when the writings of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were being collected. Yes. So if Jesus taught from scripture, what did he teach? Old Testament. I am sorry for these New Testament preachers mm. around the Caribbean. Yes, sir. Because Jesus brought it from the Old Testament. From the Old Testament. That's it. Preach. Read it again, Brother Gorin. And ex beginning where? And beginning at Moses. Uh -huh. And all the prophets. He did what? Expounded unto them. In all the scriptures. The things. Concerning himself. And where were these things? Old Testament. You don't believe me. The theme of the Bible is Jesus. <laughs> oh, yes. And how he came to save men. He said to them, search the scriptures. Yes. For in them you think you have eternal life. Yes. And these are the scriptures. Yes. That do what everybody. Testify of, of me. me. I told you that Jesus is the theme of the Bible. Jesus yes. is in every book. In Genesis, Jesus is the word of God. Yes. Creating the heavens and the earth. He is the promised seed of the woman. In 
Exodus, Jesus is the Passover lamb. In Leviticus, Jesus is the high priest, representative of the tabernacle. He is the lampstand. He is the shoe bread. He is the sacrifice. Are you listening to me? In Numbers, Jesus is the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire Fire. by night. He is the smitten rock from which living water flows. In Deuteronomy, Jesus is a prophet greater than Moses. In Joshua, Jesus is the commander of the army of the Lord, leading his people to the promised land. In Judges, Jesus is the true and final judge. In Ruth, Jesus is the kinsman redeemer. In 1st and 2nd Samuel, Jesus is the anointed shepherd king who slays the giant. In 1st and 2nd Kings, Jesus is the righteous king of kings and lord of lords. In 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Jesus is the faithful restorer of the kingdom. In Ezra, Jesus is the faithful restorer of the temple. In Nehemiah, Jesus is the redeemer building up the walls of Zion. In Esther, Jesus is the sovereign protector of his people. In Job, Jesus is the living redeemer who shall stand on the earth at the latter day. In Psalms, Jesus is the good shepherd. In Proverbs, Jesus is wisdom. In Ecclesiastes, Jesus is the lover that gives life meaning and purpose in songs of Solomon Jesus is the bridegroom in Isaiah Jesus is the promised Messiah wonderful counselor glory and mighty victorious triumphant hallelujah Lord your holy He's the mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, the suffering servant, wounded for our transgression and bruised for our iniquities. In Jeremiah, Jesus is the potter. Yes, sir. In Lamentations, Jesus is the weeping prophet. In Ezekiel, Jesus is the river of life. In Daniel, Jesus is the fourth man in the midst of the fiery furnace. In, in Hosea, Jesus is the ever faithful husband pursuing an unfaithful bride. In Joel, Jesus is the restorer. In Amos, Jesus is the burden bearer. In Obadiah, Jesus is the church. In Jonah, Jesus is salvation. In Micah, Jesus is the promised Messiah born in Bethlehem. In Nahum, Jesus is the avenger of God's people. In Habakkuk, Jesus is the reason for rejoicing. In Zephaniah, Jesus is the preserver and restorer of the remnant. In Haggai, Jesus is the desire of all nations. In Zechariah, Jesus is the cleansing foundation. In Malachi, Jesus is the son of righteousness. Hallelujah. With healing in his wings. In Matthew, he's the king of the Jews. Oh, yes. In Mark, he's the suffering servant. Come on. In Luke, he's the son of man. Yes, in John, he's the son of God, the word made flesh that dwelt among us. In Acts, Jesus is the risen Lord. In Romans, Jesus is our justification yes. and our salvation. In 1 Corinthians, he is the rock. Yes. In 2 Corinthians, he is the triumphant, sanctifying the church of God. Come in Galatians, on. Jesus is the liberation from the law. In Ephesians, Jesus is the head of the church. In Philippians, Jesus is our joy. In Colossians, Jesus is the firstborn creation. In 1 Thessalonians, he is coming again with a trumpet. With the shout of the God and the voice of the archangel. In 2 Thessalonians, Jesus is the believer's patience. In 1 Timothy, Jesus is the mediator between God and man. In 2 Timothy, Jesus is the seed of David. In Titus, Jesus is the blessed hope. For sure. In Philemon, he's a redeemer. In Hebrews, he's the high priest who can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. infirmities. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. In James, he's the one that works within us to produce works of righteousness through faith in action. In 1 Peter, he's the living stone. In 2 Peter, he's the long-suffering Lord. In 1 John, he is love. Yes, sir. In 2 John, he is the truth by which we walk in love. In 3 John, Jesus is all that is good and and, and hospitable. In Jude, Jesus is the one who keeps us from stumbling and presents us faultless, faultless, faultless and blameless before God's throne with exceeding joy. In Revelation, Jesus is Alpha 
and Omega. Omega. Come on, the beginning and the end. And the, end. Come on. the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Yes. The King of Kings and, Lord and the Lord of, of Lords. Lord. Hallelujah, preacher. Are you listening to me tonight? Yes, sir. Jesus is in every book of the Bible. Tell me again, Pastor Tito. Why are there preachers who don't like the Old Testament? It's tradition, yes. It's not the word of God. It's tradition. Because the Bible says all scripture. And that Jesus taught people from the law of Moses, from the prophets, from the Psalms. He didn't have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But he taught them from what he had. And Paul says in the New Testament, all scripture. Yes. All we say in the Creole. Tu. Tu. Huh? Panta. Todo. Toda. All. Oh, yes, preacher. All scripture. <laughs> oh, Lord, I love the word of God. The Old Testament predicts the coming of Jesus. Yes, sir. And tells us about a life written before it happened. The Old Testament tells us the place we will be born. Yes. The manner of his birth. For sure. That he will be betrayed. And the way in which he will die. Definitely. The Old Testament has power. Oh, yes. When Jesus came in the New Testament, he forgave sins. And I want to drop a word up in here tonight. Jesus is the only person who can forgive sins. Yes, sir. Do not come to confession with me. Come on now. I cannot forgive anybody's sins. True, true. I am an ordinary man. Like every other man. I have my own sin. I'm not perfect. Every day I have to fall on my knees and cry out to God to forgive me. Yes, sir. And my Bible says that you can come boldly yes. before the throne of grace, grace and cry out to God for yourself. Yes, preacher. You don't need any pastor. You don't need any priest. True. You don't need any bishop. Come on now. You don't need any OPM man. True. Pray for yourself. Yes, sir. And when you pray, pray in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. To the Father. There's one mediator. Yes, sir. Between God. You don't need to pray to anybody else. True. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, preacher. Jesus said when you pray, Pray in my name. And anything you ask me or ask the Father, he will grant it to you. When you kneel down to pray, don't call my name. True, true. Don't call title name. True. Don't call Barry name. Don't call anybody else name but Jesus. Yes, preacher. Dear Jesus or dear God, there's nobody else but Jesus, who brings us to God. True. Have I been clear here tonight? Crystal, do you understand what I have not said? I have not said. <laughs> Jesus forgave sins. He raised the dead. He unstopped the ears of the deaf. Caused the blind to see. There is power. Oh yeah. Power. Wonder. Wonder working power. Working power. Yes sir. But I got to finish this sermon. So let me remind you. Paul said all scripture. Yes. Is given by inspiration. I want to tell you one final thing tonight. This Bible has the power to change people's lives. Yes sir. Are you listening to me, church? Yes. So here's the story. Skipping a few slides. The Bible has power to transform character. 
angry, lustful, immoral thieves, drunkards, and cheaters have had their lives changed by the Bible. Amen. A story, a story, a story. I want to tell you as I get ready to close tonight, a story. It's going to take me a few minutes, but I'm going to tell it to you quickly. A tall ship called Bounty. Many years ago, somewhere around 1787, King George III of England fitted out a ship called the Bounty and manned her with 45 sailors and a captain named Bly. And started an expedition on a long trip from England to the South Sea Islands in the Pacific Ocean. Some of the islands in the West Indies belonging to England. Barbados, St. Vincent, Dominica at one point in time, St. Lucia. They were inhabited by slave labor. And the king was looking for a cheap source of food to feed slaves in the West Indies. So he sent Captain Bly on the tall ship Bounty to the South Pacific to look for food. And what some of you don't know, that is how breadfruit came to the Caribbean. Hmm. They planted this thing to feed slaves. Hmm. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Oh, yes, preacher. Now, check out what I'm telling you. Don't believe me. This is history. That's how the breadfruit got here. Now, listen to this. They eventually sailed and came to Tahiti. And they settled among the people of Tahiti collecting the breadfruit plants. It took them months to do this. And to prepare them in such a way that they will survive the journey to the West Indies so they can plant them in St. Vincent and in Roseau and in Bridgetown and in St. John's Antigua and Castries, St. Lucia. But while they stayed in Tahiti, the men fell in love with the women. You know men. Huh? And when it was time to leave, and Captain Bly said, away the anchor. The men did not want to leave. Because by then, some of them had women in Tahiti. There was talk about a coming storm. And so the captain forced them to sail. Not far from shore, there was a mutiny on the bounty. Hmm. They found the captain hiding hmm. under his bed and pulled him out. Put him in a small boat with all those who were faithful to him and pushed him out to sea. Mercy. The rest of them returned to Tahiti. They knew that sooner or later, King George would send ships from England to look for them. And so they burnt the boats. And they settled in the Pitcairn Islands. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Does the word Pitcairn sound familiar to anybody? Yes, sir. The story says they collected stuff from the boat and took it to shore with their new women. The men were brutal. They fought over the women. And they killed each other out until one man was left alone with half a dozen women. Mercy. A man called John Adams. He had children from all of them. Mm. He was king in the Pitcairn Islands. Then one day, this rough man, this murderer, this thief, opened the sea captain's chest and found inside an old book. 
And he began to read it. Yes, sir. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are they that mourn. Blessed are you when men should persecute you. He read where it says, forgive people. He read where it says, if you confess your sins, yes, sir. God is faithful. Oh, yes. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. To cleanse us from all sin. He read where it said, The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. By the time England sent out ships to find them, they caught up with John Adams living on the island. He had separated himself from all of the women except one. He was preaching to the congregation of his wives and children. And everybody on the island was keeping the Sabbath. Yes, sir. If you read about the history of the Pitcairn Island, you will observe that traditionally, almost everybody on that island has been a Seventh-day Adventist. Amen. And one man came to this conclusion. Simply by reading the Bible. The Bible. Yes, preacher. I'm going to say something here tonight. If people read the Bible, read it properly, and be honest about what they read, they would all be seven for the Adventists. Amen. If you read the Bible, and you are honest about what you read. And you practice what you read. Yes, sir. In my view, there's only one conclusion. Yes, sir. You're mighty quiet. One conclusion. I am quoting this for truth. Yes, sir. And if you are interested in hearing more, Come back Tuesday night. Amen. I hope I have not become your enemy. Because I have told you the truth. The truth. Yes, preacher. At the beginning of this sermon, I promised. Yes. I held up my hand and said, I promise to tell you the truth. Oh, yes. The whole truth. Yes. And nothing. This Bible leads to God. Yes, sir. It tells us the way. Yes. It is not tradition. True. If it's in the Bible, and if it's not in the Bible, of course we read good books that are in tune with the Bible. Yes, sir. And if you read a book, that is not in tune with the Bible. Don't follow it. True. Did you hear what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. This gospel does not depend on the priest or the pope or the bishop or the pastor. It is the word of God. And every night you come here, I will read from the Bible up here on the screen. If I read something that is not true, tell me, tell me. But I know tonight that everybody has seen it. Oh, yes. If you have not seen it, you may be stifling your conscience. We're going to end this service tonight. Grace thing, come, please. Ancient words. Long preserved. Far walk in this world. They resound with God's own, what's the word? Heart. Take back the screen for me, please. Let the ancient words impart. Let's stand and sing it, church. I'm making a call tonight. This call is simple. If you accept the Bible, you believe the Bible, you want to accept the Bible as God's word, meet me for prayer as we sing this song. Everybody, ancient words.
they resound with God's own heart. You're accepting the Bible as truth tonight, compass. Whoever you are, come. You know the truth. You know how we do it. Come. Words of life, words of hope. Words of life. Words of hope. Give us strength. Help us go. Words will guide us. Everybody sing ancient words. Ancient words. Come on down. Come down. Come down. Come down. Tonight you are saying, Lord, I accept your word. I accept the Bible. I believe the Bible. Let's sing it again. Let's sing it again. Yes. If you accept God's word tonight, come down. Come on down. Oh, he the faithful words. Ever true. Changing me. And changing you. With open arms. Oh, let the ancient words. Let's pause right here. Those in the back tent who need to come. This is the simple call tonight. Whether you are a member or a visitor, I'm calling you. And the call tonight is you are accepting the Bible as truth. If you accept the Bible tonight, not some of it, but all of it as God's divine word come meet me at the altar every time I preach every time the word of God is preached a decision must be made God's word he said will not return void and the decision tonight pastor I believe in the Bible I believe in the word of God I accept the Old Testament and the New Testament and I want to live by what God says if that is you tonight come come when you come at night and you stay in the back tent I know perhaps you don't like the noise up front but I'm calling you come on all visitors all members let's get together tonight one more verse Let's sing that last stanza again. True sacrifice. Oh, he the faithful words. Ever true. I'm waiting on somebody else. Somebody else from the back tank. Somebody else, come. Come tonight, church. I want to remind you. The baptism is Sabbath. Anybody who has made a decision that you want to be baptized, we will baptize you. Please return on Tuesday and Wednesday and Friday. I have a lot to say to you that you need to hear it will all be coming from the Bible and if you have made up your mind or you're thinking about being baptized this coming Sabbath is the baptism many of our pastors and elders are waiting to have conversations with you if you have a question ask it if you need something explained to you ask it because this coming Sabbath is the baptism and God has promised me a large crowd of people will be baptized. Many of you are standing here tonight. Some of you don't know it yet. But God has told me, God has promised me that his word will not return, return void. It must accomplish it. And if you are honest, 
if you are honest, don't stifle your conscience tonight. If you've been listening to what I have been saying, you will be able to admit to yourself, this is the word of God. Whenever God speaks, he calls for response. We are ready to baptize you. Every one of you. Every one of you. Prepare for it. Prepare for it. You parents of Adventist children, prepare your children. It is your responsibility to prepare them. Seven, eight, nine, ten years old. They are not too young. The drug pusher doesn't care. People raping little children, they don't care. They're big enough for folly and foolishness. They're big enough for Jesus. And if you have done your job well in training them, they are ready. They are ready. Get them ready for this Sabbath. I love the word of God. Do you love the word of God? Let's talk to him about it. Heavenly Father, thy words were found. And I did eat them. And they became the rejoicing of my soul and of my heart. All your words are so sweet. The author of Hebrews says the word of God is quick. Sharper than any two-edged sword. It cuts, but it heals. Your word, oh God, gives us many wonderful promises. I will never, 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 never leave you or forsake you. When we are depressed, your word has encouragement. When we are doubting, your word brings confidence. Lord, tonight when we are lost, your word makes us found. Lord, when we are sinful, your word brings forgiveness, cleansing, healing, pardon, salvation, eternal life. Thank you for your words, God. Thank you tonight. Thank you that every man, woman, boy, and girl in my hearing of my voice tonight has seen your word for himself or herself. And right now, oh God, your Holy Spirit is moving up and down this place. Convict men and women of sin, Lord. Give them no choice. Help them to understand that they need to surrender. And to obey your word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We say these things and claim them done. In Jesus' precious name. Now we say go in peace for God the Father loves you. Go in peace for God the Son died to save you. Go in peace for God the Holy Spirit is in you and with you to guide you. Go there church. In peace. Please be safe tomorrow. Whatever you do. If you go to the river. If you go to the ocean. Be safe. Eat well. Drink well. Stay away from alcohol. Drive safely. See you on Tuesday night. See you on Tuesday night. Wednesday night. Friday night. Bring a friend and come. Online. Thank you for joining us. Get home safe everybody. Let's sing our part in some or fellowship some thank you for the cross Lord thank you for the cross Lord everybody sing as you leave thank you for the cross you pay in all my pain and shame in love you came and gave
Whoa.